The unique dreamlike vibe of Dying Light 2 Stay Human combines the very serious end of day's theme with hilarious character and simple mechanisms that have you knocking zombies off a tower with a wicked bat is crazy, yet somehow it works really well. The zombie smashing action game is a powerful thread adventure featuring top tier parkour mobility. A vast open world in which to put them to good use, and lots of fascinating characters. Game logic. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the best. Timeless moment to moment gameplay that keeps up the strain on death every step of your adventure. During the night, you have to be very careful, very careful, and very selective with everything you do so you can make it back to a nearby paradise with UV lights to recharge your meter like a driver with a limited oxygen supply do risk looting every part of a mission location or speed through and fulfill the primary goal to reduce danger should you take time to sneak around to avoid conflict or would it be simpler to push the attack and risk being attacked to accomplish a goal faster decision like this Built on top of the action and offer you something you think about beyond merely splattering the closest zombies and looting their bodies. Your biggest assets. Yeah. Your strongest assets in this and the biggest feature of Dying Light 2 by far is its freewheeling and seamless movement system, which builds upon the previous game's already outstanding token. You will jump from building to building, climb skyscrapers and even swing around with a grappling hook with natural simplicity. Since the city streets are flooded with the undead by nights and not yet dead robbers by day, sneaking to rooftops quickly becomes one of the most complex and high stakes games of the floor on East Lava of all time and is continuously entertaining if even when you are just running from point A to point B. Let yeah. Please tell me that I can't. As you gain experience, a range of over 20 unlocking movement abilities lets you to transfer the city in unexpected ways like sprinting on walls, slipping under tight areas and if you are really in a tight situation, Turning up the schools of zombies to get away. Once escaped from the top of the building by grabbing a zombie, flipping off the roof and riding him all the way down till he is my fall at the bottom. And the time I escaped a group of zombies by wall running on the side of buildings while the dummies who chase me plunk to their death. There really aren't many games that can stand a candle to over the top crazy stops you can pull off in Dying Light 2. Later on, there's even a paraglider that makes rooftop travel possible in city scripts where vast buildings height makes travel by foot problematic. And by that time, it truly seemed like I had the freedom to go wherever I wanted, combat against humans and zombies. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any need. Fighting against human and zombies equally can also be a lot of fun as you dropkick faces, avoid and parry attacks, and lop off arms, legs, and bones. That said, when it comes to human opponents, the AI leaves a lot of potential challenges on the table due to the fact that huge groups don't know how to gang up on you, enabling you to primarily block and take them off at a time while their buddies sit back and assist by yelling expletives at you. There also isn't much variation in the short of human enemies you bet, simply standard grunts and much beefer, slower enemies with large two-handed weapons. Once you learn to block and escape, the few strikes they, they have, they're never much of a danger, even on the toughest difficulties. Yeah. 
So, thinking of modern things is nearly completely done up close and personal. You won't discover any firearms in Dying Light 2 and ranged weapons in general are quite rare. So much of the time, you will be chopping away with a broad range of combat weapons and spend the range of samurai sword to brass knuckles to a metal pipe with a tin can on the end of it. Weapons come to you as randomly produced loot out in the world or as purchased from merchants in social centers. But either way, they have a limited amount of uses before they rot and ultimately shatter. However, if you don't care for seeing your trusty weapons collapse to ash in your hands, know that Dying Light 2 doesn't push it on you as much as, say, Breath of the Wild. In reality, the greatest weapons may be altered to enhance their durability, do more damage or apply status effect, and can be repaired a limited number of times to extend their use. In my experience, by the time a weapon eventually fails on me, chances are it had already grown too low level for me to want to use it anyway. Besides which, you were always refilling your choices with better goods as well, so it's unlikely you will ever find yourself empty-handed while you were facing off while you were facing off against a beast. Thank you. Life, I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no cap Only got one, so you better go live it up